Degen Nation, Kenny Kim here bringing you another Fantasy Golf Degenerates podcast this week for the RSM Classic. As usual, I am here with everyone's favorite bald Canadian, Tyler Tambaline. Tyler, <laughs> what is up, my friend? What is up, Kenny? It is good to have you back, my friend. And this week I was told I'm not everyone's favorite Canadian. There's a new Canadian on the block. Going to talk a lot about my boy, Mac Hughes, Canadian brethren. I'm happy, though. I like when you're on a good Canadian. So we'll talk about it as we get through the show. Before we get into it, I want to remind everyone very quickly, this show is brought to you and presented by DraftKings. We have a great offer from DraftKings Sportsbook later on, so stay tuned for that. And then also want to talk about our stats provider, FantasyNational.com. Head on over to FantasyNational.com slash FGD. Get yourself 25% off your first payment. And Kenny, it's it's a sad moment here, right? It's the last event of 2021. We're turning a new corner. We're going to be back, of course, in the new season here on Mayo Media Network, which is awesome. But uh, it's the last one. I missed you last week, but we did pick a winner. I had the Jason Kokrak ticket. Bearoff comes on. He always helps pick winners, and I love that about him. And I, he's got a winner for you this week, too. He gave me one today to bring on to the show. I'll talk about it at the end of the show, but uh, really nice to hit another winner this season. Kokrak, 50 to 1. A lot of people had it, but you know, just a guy that continues to do well and extremely impressive how he did it after that round two back nine, just to still come back and get the job done kind of with ease, but uh, wasn't the hardest field to close out either, but the confidence is definitely there. Three wins in the last 12 months. Yeah. I'll be honest. I didn't want shit. Like, you know, you know, you know, you know, when I break, I break, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, 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 like if a guy fell off a ladder uh, at work or something and he got hurt and I was on break, get, I was like, where's Kenny at? Like he's on break. Well, this guy's going to die. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just what's going to happen because Kenny is on a break. Uh, so, so he can't do nothing about it. So, so, I mean, I, I kept up with it a little bit. Uh, you know, I was, I had my Leishman and Wolf tickets out there. And though, once those, I realized those weren't going to pan out. I was like, eh, let's watch my Washington football team beat up on Tom Brady uh, and, and the box, which is the highlight of my weekend that and sleep. I had to work Saturday. So uh, yeah, sleep, and uh and the, and the uh the washington team winning um uh, well i mean from what i not saw but saw on my pga tour app uh occasionally scrolling and seeing what was going on i mean it was i mean i think it, like after the first round coke rack was up there and he, he he's lost like seven strokes on the replay uh when they replayed on tuesday morning bar- like barely made the cut you know what I'm saying? After being like close to first round leader or something like that. Uh, and then going out and just going ham on the back nine uh, on Sunday with four birdies uh, to close out his round to take the, take the win. We had Martin Trainer up on the leaderboard. Uh, I, I I guess he's in the tournament this week. He had to finish, he finished top 10, right? Uh, so he'd be in the event this week, I think. Uh, he should be, I think. Uh, uh, crazy by him. And then, you know, Wolf sort of falling apart. Scheffler. He's going to get his at some point in time. You would, you would expect the town is too strong, but man, like Sundays when he's in contention, he's just bad. He's just bad. Whenever he's in contention on Sunday, it's, it's pretty, pretty awful thing to see because you know, the town's there. He's like the last of the group, uh, you know, Hovland, Morikawa, Neiman, Sungjae, like all these new young bloods out here. And this is the one guy that doesn't win, uh, who's just as talented probably as all of them, uh, you know, at least close to it. Uh, and still no win. So yeah. Uh, other than that, I have no clue what happened. None. Yeah. It's no okay. Clue. I can see why you would do that. Like you said, I, I would be the same. You keep an eye on your tickets. I certainly was with the Coke rack one. You mentioned shot a 30 on that front nine and then goes and shoots. I think it was a 41 on the back nine, just to fight third, like, third goal through. forever to win a tournament after yeah. shooting 41 on a nine. I, I thought it was pretty incredible. And like I said, it was impressive down the stretch. You mentioned Scotty Scheffler, the double S, the initial, stands for shitty Sundays. You're right. It's absolutely horrible how he does it on Sundays. But, man, like you said, he's going to get one. I know Rick Gaiman posted the tweet. I think he said, who, who's the best without one if Scotty gets it? And then Scotty doesn't get it. So, uh, of course, Baroff, you know, thanks again to joining for last week for Ryan Baroff. It was awesome. He said, uh, you know, fits, and I couldn't agree more. I know it's sort of a running joke with him, as is – the coke rack stand. He's he's a coke rack. He's one of the coke rack people. We talked about that on the show last week. What are the worst kind of people? The ones that you're cheering for. Uh, and coke rack. He got to add a third trophy 
to his bio. So there was good, uh, good on him. Uh, he, I don't know if he bet him. I don't think he did, to be honest. But uh, I was happy to have him. Some other guys on the board, Joel Damon, be talking about him this week. Henley keeps doing his thing, be talking about him for sure. Burns, Wolf, I think you mentioned some stuff on Twitter about Burns and how good he is. The guy just doesn't stop. He's incredible. Gooch uh, didn't, didn't have a good weekend himself after a great first round. I know it was his birthday on Sunday. It got mentioned. There was a narrative there. But, um, you know, still made the cut. He's back in the field again this week. McCarthy, Liss, Smalley, Lebiota, Cam Smith, bunch of guys that we'll be talking about on this week, Kenny. But this is not my favorite week. I know you said you sort of t- took a week off last week. I'm not taking the week off, but this week just bothers me so much because it's the same shit every single year, right? It's the RSM. Everyone has ties to the area. There's a million different. I think there's 100 guys in the field that you could say have some sort of reasoning to be, oh, they're going to do well because they have this tie. Well, so does 99 other guys with that dude. Oh, there's no shot tracker on plantation. We know it. If you're playing showdown, make sure to play plantation because there's four power fives. Oh, thanks tips. You know, all these things that come up throughout the week. It just drives me crazy. I'm excited for this event, but I'm also excited, you know, for the tournaments, for the money, for the prize pools to still be in the game, but I'm definitely excited for the break coming up as well. Yeah. Looking forward to not doing this shit for like six weeks. It's going to be awesome. (laughs) Uh, Definitely. Definitely looking forward. Definitely looking forward to that. I uh, need the break personally, uh, so it works out. But let's just go ahead and, and go ahead to, to this week because uh, we'll, we'll make it short and sweet. That makes it easier for me as well. Uh, let's talk about uh, this week. Did you want to talk about anything else before we get to the course, Tambo? Uh, yeah, actually, I'll talk about it right now. One more thing. So just the plan. You mentioned it. We mentioned it. You know, nothing going to be going on for the hero, the QBE. We've already talked through this. What we are going to do is something else, though. We're going to put together a preview for the year. So at the end of December, Kenny and I are going to hop on, record that. We'll have a bunch of stuff in there, try and make it unique to ourselves. We'll make some picks for uh, the year, for the rookie of the years, the you know rookie of the year, sorry, the, the majors, of course, all the big things, talk about happenings throughout. And then that's where the TOC is going to become real. I know we've mentioned this a million times now, but just to round it up, people have DM me and asked, and we've got it all thought. The thought process is there. We're just trying to get the final details to lay it out but we are going to run it. Just look at my schedule here. The first full field event. So we'll be back for the tournament of champions. Of course, the century tournament of champions, uh, January 6th to the 9th, have a show for that week always, but we're going to run the TOC and restart the listener league for the first full field event, fullish field event at the Sony open in Hawaii. So I think that's going to be a fun time. We'll have a lot of prizes, money, extra things added. So for those of you that have been patient and waited, it will be well worth it. We'll get back to it. Not not sure yet if it's going to be a $5 three max or a single entry. I'll, I'll let you guys know as we get through to it and see where we go from there. But that's the plan, just so everybody's aware on what's going to happen with the show, where we're at. If you're wondering, that's what our year is going to look like. The preview show should be awesome, right? We'll, we'll get a good plan in place for that and put a lot into it for you guys. All right, so let's get to this week. PGA Tour goes to St. Simons, St. Simons Island, Georgia. Uh, for the last event of the 2021 year, RSM Classic is going to be played to Sea Island Resort Golf Clubs, the Seaside and Plantation Course. Uh, golfers will be playing each of the two courses during the first two rounds, then finish the weekend at the Seaside Course. Uh, the tour does this so they can fit all 156 golfers uh, in the field with the early uh, darkness because of daylight savings. Um, you know, the cut per usual 65 and ties. It, you know, it's been at this event, at this um, location for all of its tournaments uh 2015 was the first year they went to the two course rotation uh personally of course you're gonna i'm gonna be focusing more on seaside courses so we're gonna be playing three out of the four rounds uh now one thing of note everyone talks about the plantation course and how it plays easier you know last year it played pretty more more difficult uh than the um, seaside course so and that was mostly and it had something to do with dl3 uh, redesigning the greens, also a little bit of wind and weather. Uh, so it's not always uh, a cakewalk over there, but I mean, there was still some low scores to be had on that course. Um, now, of course, like Tambo said earlier, you know, you probably want to focus on the plantation course golfers uh, for showdown. I mean, you, you, know, you could throw a sneaky seaside guy in there that you think you can ball out because there have been low scores there too. It's not like it's not a birdie fest over there, but the weather looks like it's a little rough. Uh, at least the wind uh, from what I'm seeing early Monday, uh, like 30 mile per hour gusts on Friday. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on, especially when it comes to wave advantages. Uh, also who's playing what course um, 
on what day. Uh, so that's something to, to pay attention to uh, as the week goes on. Of course, there's a lot of golfers with ties to the course. You know, before like 2017, 2018, these Sea Island Mafia guys, they really didn't play very well at this course. Uh, but the last four years, it's been a little bit different. You've seen like the home field advantage sort of pay off uh, for a lot of these guys like Chris Kirk, um, you know, what's his name? ZJ, Kirk, Kisner, and Harmon, all local guys, eight top eights. Uh, in the last four years between those four guys. So it, it might be something to that. Uh, I'm not going to pay too much attention to it, maybe a tiebreaker or something when it comes down to it. Um, you know, like I said, the weather, uh, just pay attention, be mindful of that. And so let's get to the actual course, the seaside course at Sea Island Golf Club, 7,000-ish, par 70, four par threes, two par fives. Uh, in dry conditions, the par fives should be reachable uh, by the majority of golfers you know, as long as the wind's not crazy in their face. The course is a traditional link style course with an ocean breeze uh, playing a big factor. Off the tee golfers, you see average size fairways that actually get a bit more narrow the longer you, you uh, get from the get from the um, tee box. Uh, this leads to a lot of golfers using less to driver uh, off the tee. Nearly 70% of fairways have been hit here over the years. So you're going to get a, a lot of less than less to driver uh, on this course. The rough, not too bad, two, two and a half inches uh, here. Uh, and if golfers miss the fairway, they're going to have to deal with bunkers, marshland, seaside vegetation, native areas, plenty of water. Uh, the fairways themselves are rolling and hilly and should play firm, uh, weather dependent, as long as they don't get a deluge of rain. Uh, on approach shots, golfers will see large overseeded Bermuda grass greens, stimulating rating of around 11 and a half. Uh, most of the greens are elevated and have a good amount of slope and undulation. Greenside bunkers guard the putting surface, and the rough looks a bit thicker uh, than it does around the fairways. Uh, the, the rough around the greens it looks a little bit thicker than around the fairways. Uh, then a plantation course, uh, you know, 7,100, a little less than that, par 72, uh, with four par threes, four par fives. Uh, all the par fives are reachable. None are longer than 560 yards. I'm going to sneeze. No, no, I'm good. All right. Uh, the course went through a bit of a redesign. A few years ago, bunkers were removed. Grass and the greens were replaced. Uh, you know, as noted earlier, uh, this along with the wind made the course play a little bit more difficult uh, than we've seen. Uh, off the tee golf, you see wide tree line fairways, similar rough dimensions as seaside. A lot more bunkers uh, all, compared to seaside water. Still going to be a factor uh, on the plantation course. The large trees should shield the course a bit from the wind, unlike seaside. Uh, the fairways are relatively flat, but they should have a good amount of roll on them if conditions are dry. Uh, on approach shots, golfers see much smaller greens uh, compared to seaside with a lot more bunkers guarding the greens. Um, you know, and, and you would think that the grass has grown in uh, from when DL3 redid everything. So I would say it would be a little bit softer, but we'll have to see as the week goes on. Tambo, what are you looking for? Yeah, a lot of the same stuff you mentioned there. You know, the main stuff here is the obvious fairways, greens, making putts, B Bermuda putters, all of those factors that you sort of mentioned. And then uh, going over to Fantasy National, just breaking it down quite easily. We mentioned it earlier. You can use fantasynational.com slash FGD. Get yourself 25% off your first payment. When you go over there, you'll be able to see it and break it down just like this. But fairways gained, greens and regulation, strokes gained putting. Just have a look. Three putt avoidance has popped up. Obviously, you don't want to make too many mistakes, so you can't. If you want to be in the mix making the cut uh, birdies are better just in general always looking at that dk scoring and then the big thing you mentioned there ken i think is something definitely to keep an eye on this week the weather does sound like it could be in play it's early in the week we'll never know till it gets there but wednesday night you'll want to pay attention to it it could be some wave advantages and it's never a bad idea any week that it's in play is just to try it out a little bit as well as mixing it especially when people are going to have trouble with that because of the two different courses they're playing on even though the wave should tell all some people will wonder well isn't that course it's they play it both the opposite days so figure out the wave advantage and it could be to your advantage especially in a week where not a lot of people uh, are, are as into it as we are so i think for sure it's a good week to keep an eye on weather all right that sounds good let's get to the tiers 10k range harrison english all the way to shitty sunday scotty scheffler yeah, I love so that got. name. But before we get into the tiers, we are going to run it back. We are going to just change it up and head back. We've got the ad for you guys from DraftKings Sportsbook. Football fans, who's ready to score some free bets? Now you can when you bet on any NFL game this week with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. 
New customers who bet just $1 on either team to score can win $100 in free bets. When a team scores, you score. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, DraftKings won't leave you empty-handed. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes all season long with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports Contests. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code FGD, bet $1 on either team to score, and win $100 in free bets. If they score, you score with promo code FGD this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, NJIN or PA only, new customers only, minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer, restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. So let's get to these tiers, the top tier. Tampa, who do you like? Yeah, a couple guys. Here's the thing I think about this top tier is a couple. I'm not going to say they're overrated because they're excellent golfers. It's literally Scotty Scheffler and Cam Smith I'm talking about. They're incredible. But what I'm saying is this. We've talked about on this very show plenty in the past about two other golfers there that we say have just got better. And there's a third as well. So the two I like most, Webb and Louie. I just think, again, they fit the course, they can putt well, they can find everything that, you know, I'm talking about tonight is going to be going off of the same stats that I mentioned, all those factors, strength of field, how it all lines up, some course history and whatnot, but Webb, Louie, and then we've talked about it plenty of times with Harris English, and yes, there's the ties and all that stuff that goes with it, but just in general, he's just become a much better golfer. So for me, Webb, Louie, and then some Harris English as well mixed in. I like Cam. Uh, Cam probably going to be one of my favorite plays on the board. He is my first cash game cornerstone this week. Uh, strong in putting, strong in uh, approach. Uh, one of the better wedge players uh, in this field. You know, 100 to 150 is where you're going to see the, the majority of all approaches. And he's one of the top guys in both ranges uh, in this field. I like Cam. I might even go against my normal um, train of thought when it comes to cash. Even though he is my cash game cornerstone. And use the hell out of him. Uh, in GPPs as well. So he is my numero uno. Other than that, I might play Usti. I might even fade the rest. Uh, I don't I don't know uh, how I'm going to go about this, but I like Usti. Usti is probably the one that I would play also with it. Again, you went through it. His approach game is good. He's, he's been punting pretty well. The one worry, of course, I have is his short, short wedges from 1 to 125. He's not the best, uh, but hopefully, you know, he positions, he positions himself off the tee to avoid those types of yardages because he knows uh, that's a weakness. But he's also strong in, in par four scoring. Uh, that's something else that's important and strong in par three scoring. Uh, when it comes to the winners of this event, you've seen strong outings from those two types of from par three and par four scoring uh, for the past winners here. Um, so I like Usti, but Cam is probably my favorite play on the board. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he will be in my cash game. Cornerstones next tier. I'll go ahead and start in the 9K range. I like Corey Connors. Uh, he's going to be my second cash game cornerstone. Uh, we're going with a couple of Canadians in my cash game cornerstone. You can probably already tell who the third one is if you follow my Twitter feed. Uh, but the, uh, you know, Connors again, iron play strong, T to green strong, T to green strong. You know, wedge is pretty good, par four, par three, all strong. I, I'm a fan of him. I think, you know, he has that one win. I think another one's on the verge. He's a good player, especially how good he is off the tee and with his approaches. Uh, you know, Tita Green, he, he, is, he is an exceptional golfer, uh, accurate on both fronts when it comes to ball striking. Uh, I think he'll fit this course nicely. Uh, so I like uh, Connors as my second cast game cornerstone. I'll go with Henley. Uh, you know, Iron Game, of course, is his strength. Uh, you know, he's been playing pretty good golf, sort of falling off a little bit uh, when it comes to the weekends. But again, he is probably the best wedge player. Uh, in this field from 100 to 150 yards and you're going to be tar- I want to target golfers who are strong in that little in that area and so I like Henley uh, and I'll go Adam Scott in 9k just because of you know it seems like the name value and and, and how good of a golfer he can be uh, what was the tournament that he almost won was that Wyndham Wyndham which said uh, field is a bit of a comp as well so it, it kind of makes sense and, yeah. lines up, and field strength is pretty similar as well yeah so I, I think I can go with with Adam Scott when it comes to that uh, this week, Tambo. 
yeah, I'm bound, I'm going with that bounce back as well. I, I think he's a good spot here. I love Connors at the top. That's why I'm not as high in that upper range, much like yourself. You said you could even go with fading everyone but your guy Cam and maybe a little bit of Louie or whatever. But uh, I'm, you know, there's three or four guys in this range. Henley, I'm I'm definitely betting him. I think he's been playing much better golf. I feel good about the number. I got him at 30 to one. We'll talk about more about the bets later. But I think that uh, if he gets popular here, there's other guys that can play. I think Norin right underneath him. We know he's a grinder. He could end up, we'll see what the tee times look like and the wave advantage. What if he gets something like that over a guy like Henley, I could easily see making that pivot. I think that could actually make a lot of sense here. And then also on the other side of it, uh, just underneath him, Taylor Gooch. I think it's a, a little bit of a prime spot to bounce back. He had one, he still made the cut, just had a bad weekend this week just passed. And I think just going back to him here uh, with all the talk around Kevin Kisner, I'm playing kind of the guys I just think are better golfers now or lately then necessarily they've played amazing here in the past or have upside because of that. That's why people like them. So uh, Henley, Norin, Gooch, Scott, that's sort of the three or four. We'll see what I do with Henley that I could get after in this range. I feel like Gooch has played like every event in the fall. How many events has he? He's played a lot. I think dude's got to be tired. We'll see how he is. I mean, I was, I was off him last week and I guess it ended up working out. He still made the cut. Uh, but I, and the guy's got to be tired. He's been playing a lot of golf. Let's move to this 8K range. My third cash game cornerstone. We're going all Canada. If I had a Canadian flag, I'd be waving it <laughs> right here. I'm sure Tambo has one somewhere in his house, I would hope. Uh, so I'm going Mac Hughes uh, at 8,600. Former winner here, won in 2015. Uh, top 10 in greens and regulation last week. Iron game looked really, really strong. His putter held him back. And his putter is usually his strength. Uh, so when it comes down to that, I think uh, he makes a great play at good price. I think I, for this field, the guy's are making a ton of cuts. Uh, he's been in there. So I like Matt Hughes as my third cash game cornerstone. Uh, we talked, you talked a little bit about him early on, Joel Dahlman, uh, one another event sort of in the, in the uh, wind. I think it was a uh, Puerto Rico, right? What, what, what event did he win? Corrales. Corrales. Yeah. So I like Dahlman in the wind. Really good showing. Last week, been making a ton of birdies, pretty strong with his wedge play uh, as well. So I like Joel Tomlin. Uh, I'll go with Seamus Power. Uh, I'll go back to him. People have been probably want to go off him. I think he missed a cut last week, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I did not watch anything, so I I forgot. Uh, so so I, I but I think you know the stat wise, he just lines up really really well. Uh, iron game, strong par four scoring is good. One twenty five to one fifty, one of the best in the field. Uh, so I do like. Uh, Seamus Power and Captain Kirk at $8,000. I'll go with uh, with Captain Kirk there. Uh, I was a first-round leader a few weeks back. Uh, you know he can go low. Uh, he's played he, – this is like, uh, again, uh, sort of a home game for him. He should feel comfortable at this course. Uh, has a, had a couple of top finishes here in the last few years. I like his price, so I like Chris Kirk. Yeah, I'm with you on Kirk a little bit, especially in tournaments. I just don't know – uh, what his ownership will look like, but I think he could still get in there low enough. I think he makes sense at 8,000 going up. I'm with you on power hundred percent, but I always play him and I just think he's too cheap. I think the talent is there. I kind of like that. He missed the cut last week. I'm just not sure. Again, I think people are, have caught on a little bit to that stuff by now. And I think I'll go right back to him. He was 8,400 last week and very popular this week at 8,200 is $200 dip. But again, it's fine. I'll go there. Joel Damon. I like, uh, Keegan Bradley up at the top is a guy I'll always take chances on. Again, it's name value in the field. There's plenty of guys in the 9K range you could play instead, but I, I think he's a good spot. And I'm not as high on Hughes. You talked about waving the flags, and all I can think about is the sorry, the the gif on Twitter where the two Canadians are just waving their flag. I feel like there's going to be a lot of that for a lot of disappointed Mac Hughes fans this week. I get it. Former winner here. Every, it, all the stuff lines up. And listen. The guy's incredible. He hits tons of greens. He's a great putter. There's all the stuff on why you should be on him. I just think there's other guys around him that you can play in this range and get away with it. So I'm not going to be as high as you. He would fall into the large field stuff, playing 20 plus lineups, get him in. But if I was building one single lineup this week, I'd probably look to differentiate on Mac Hughes. Uh, going into the 7K range, Kenny, I'll start us off just to get through some of this stuff. Yeah, it's not as wide of a range, so I'm going to actually do the whole thing because I, I just don't have a ton in here. Again, this is where I think a lot of people will go based on the Sea Island ties, the you know, the Carolina ties, all these factors that people will want to bring up or past course history and all these things. And some of these will line up with that, but it's not necessarily why I'm going to play it. I like Luke List. Uh, we were on him there last week. You guys have been playing some pretty good golf. I definitely bet him this week. Again, we'll talk about that later, but I think he was off by like 
I think he's already went down like the 30 points I thought he was off by when I got him this morning. So I definitely love that. Troy Merritt, uh, if uh, it's not always going to be a birdie fest here, but we like him cheaper in birdie fests with capability to have upside. The stats do line up. So I like him quite a bit. Brandon Grace, go back to the well on him. Played him last week. Didn't really work out, obviously. So uh, going back did, to him. Did you hear the thing about Grace? What is he? He has some disease that he is fighting. Costco-cophobia or something. I, I, it was something. If you, he, He's fighting some type of illness that has been holding him back. And that's why he missed. Uh, that's why he didn't play very well in the event. Go ahead and keep talking and I'll find it. Yeah, look it up. I was trying to just to quickly to see. I didn't see that, but I just, again, I think about the course uh, and talked earlier a little bit about the three putt avoidance factor. And he's literally number one in the field over the last 50 rounds. He just doesn't make big mistakes like that. Uh, some tournament flyers. Brian Stewart was pretty good to me a couple weeks ago. I'll go back to him. Aaron Rye's been playing some good golf. I'll go back to him. Um, Tyler Duncan, Keith Mitchell, Smalley, Moore, Reavy, just a bunch of guys here that you can play. So I don't hate the area, but like I said, it's not going to be to play all the same guys as everybody else. A lot of other guys will get brought up, I think, with some of the ties this week. And those are some that stand out to me. And then Denny McCarthy, right, at 7K minimum at the bottom. I think you can always play him uh, in a tournament where putting is of importance, and I definitely think it is here. So Denny McCarthy makes sense at 7,000 as well. All right, so Brandon Grace says he has – costrochondritis, also known as chest wall pain syndrome. It's a benign inflammatory condition affecting the upper costochondral junctions and costosternal joints. Costochondritis is a common cause of chest pain, which is considered a medical emergency until life-threatening conditions can be ruled out. Doesn't sound great to me. Doesn't sound very good. <laughs> yeah, no, it does not. <laughs> doesn't sound great to me. I mean, he's playing this week, so beware of the injured golfer. Uh, I know a lot of people like him this week, and he could probably still go off, but that's doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good to me. Uh, but let's uh, we'll move on to this. Uh, I'll move on to the seven K range. Man, I'm going. I hate to say it. I'm going with the old man cheater. Uh, not cheater, uh, cheap, cheap, cheapskate, the villain, Matt the Kuchar, who's been, yeah, the cheaper, cheaper. Cheater. he's been playing a little bit better golf here recently in the last month or two. Uh, again, a guy who likes this course, who's, who has the ties to this course, like you say. Um, so I, I don't mind playing him. I don't think he'll be very popular. I mean, how popular is Kuchar ever nowadays? He used no, to be never one, of, exactly. one of the chalkiest guys uh, out there, but in the last 12 rounds, his baseline stats have improved tremendously from what they were from the past 50. So we'll see if he can continue that trend. Um, other guys I like, I like the top of this range. I like uh, uh, Patrick Rogers, a guy who almost had a win here, um, you know, a few years ago who came really close, who's been playing good in golf. Danny Lee, another guy that I like in this range, uh, who's been playing exceptionally well, uh, you know, and, and I, I talked about it a couple weeks ago, how it seems like his head is sort of, got a little bit better like what happened when he was in contention a few weeks ago uh and then we just went brain dead for three holes and you would think he just bogey out not even finish top 10 and then coming out and finishing uh in second place with a couple birdies to finish around that, that that showed me a lot uh about where his game and where his headspace could normally is because usually in, in that situation this is when Danny Lee just gives up uh you know and, and the guys been playing really really good golf uh, so I'll go with my fellow Korean brethren, uh, Danny Lee at 7,700. At a long, I like him a lot. Really, really strong golf here recently. The stats aren't going to tell you uh, that much, except that his putter has been really, really hot. And hopefully he can rely on that again a little bit more this week when it comes down to it because, uh, you know, I'm almost thinking about using him in cash uh, this week. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, if you go down a little bit more, uh, I like Smalley at 70, what, 7,100. Uh, really, really good on par fours. Really good from 125 to 150 here recently. Some pretty strong finishes. A couple of top 20s. Uh, I might even think about using him in cash uh, this week. Uh, Keith Mitchell, uh, I'm sorry, Pat Kazire, 7,100. Another guy uh, with ties to this area who I like uh, this week, who's been doing pretty well when it comes to his wedge play also. So I like Kazire down here a little bit. In the 6K range, I'll just go ahead 
and do my final cash game cornerstone. It's going to be Vincent Whaley. Uh, stats are going to say nothing, but the guy's made like 800 cuts out of like 805. Uh, mm-hmm. He's just a cut maker. And I'm looking at 66 uh, $6,600. I need someone down below to be able to, to be my punt play. This is the guy. I'll just go with him. He just keeps making cuts. Uh, he keeps grinding out there. I mean, at one point, I think he was like minus four uh, in contention going into the weekend last week. Uh, sort of fell off on Sunday. Uh, but I, I, I like him. All. I like him to make the cut. That's what I'm hoping. So cash game cornerstones this week. They are going to be Cam Smith at 10-1. Corey Connors at 9-9. Mac Hughes at 8-6, uh, Vincent Whaley at 6-6. Six, six. That'll be like 14-6 left uh, for your cash for the rest of your lineup. Go ahead, finish off the 6K range, and I'll go after you there, Tampa. Okay, because, yeah, this is the thing. I motored through the 7K range, and the reason is is because I actually think the 6500 the $6,900 range, to me, is the same guys or better than the bottom of that 7K range. And so that's where I'm at here. If you look at it, there's a lot of guys. Chad Ramey who we've liked all through this swing season, has shown some stuff, played some pretty good golf, great on the Corn Ferry Tour before that. Uh, Landry, Neesmith. Neesmith is one of the better plays down here, I think, for sure. When you think about fairways, greens, that's just what he does. I like him quite a bit. Uh, Michael Thompson, Taylor Pendrith. I can rattle off some more names. Grayson Sig, all guys that we've been playing that have actually shown themselves to play some pretty good golf. And then even some of the bigger names down here. So Swafford, to me, he's basically Pat and Kazire for cheaper. You got Kramer Hickok. Had himself a pretty good season in his own right. 6,600. Hits a lot of fairways, greens, can putt. Everything solid lines up there. Hank Lebiota, very much of the same. So I think all those guys, Straka, if you don't want to compare my other one above, but let Straka be your Kazire for cheaper at, at 6,500. And then this is the one I mentioned earlier. I'll round out the, the range here, Kenny, and you can finish us out. But uh, Andrew Novak, the friend of the pod, Mr. Ryan Baroff mentioned said he thinks he's a sleeper for a top 20 this week. So I, I got to listen to him on that one. Like I said, he's been on here picking winners, following up. I think it's a good spot. Andrew Novak at 6,300 for a top 20 this week. I mean, honestly, I don't even know who Andrew Novak is. So I'll go ahead and listen to to uh, Mr. Bearhoff on that one. Other guys I like in this range. You named off a bunch of them. I like Neesmith. Of course, the Iron Game, Tita Green is always going to be strong. Camillo has the course history here. I can go with a little Vegas. What are you going to do about Zach Johnson? Yeah, no, he him? falls in the same group of those other guys that if you maybe in my 150, we'll see, but uh, not very likely versus all these other guys I mentioned around him. And the guys are so good here. Like every year, like top 10, just bang, 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 top 10 every year. I, I don't know if I don't play him either, uh, but you can't deny what he's been doing. You know, he's sort of falling off a little bit. I think I can get back on on a course like this is Mr. Stewie Sink at $6,900. Okay. The guy's not played very well, but you know he's a proven winner with a couple of wins uh, here in the last year or so. Um, getting the guard is no ownership because he hasn't been playing very good golf, but going back, uh, you know, to this type of course, it seems like it should suit him just a little bit. I thought you were going to uh, say the real Rory, Mr. Rory Sabatini. No Metal sabs, winner. no sabs, but Davis Riley. How about Davis Riley? who has been yeah. playing good golf down yeah. here. I can go with him. Tons of birdies. Been, been a birdie machine uh, here the last month or so. Uh, and, you know, if it comes down to it, the wind's not that bad. Maybe that's what you're going to need this week. Uh, Hank, I can get on. Michael Thompson, I'm a fan, like you said. Uh, Nick Hardy, uh, again, another guy who's been really, really good uh, from tee to green here recently. Approach game, really, really strong. I can get on Nick Hardy uh, just a little bit, and uh, I think that's about it for me. Uh, anybody else in this range that you like? I was trying to think. I don't think anybody else, but you just said it too. Like you rattled off way more names in that range than the seven K. So it's kind of interesting. But one thing, last thing I would say, I guess to tie it all together is I got no problem leaving salary this week, just because like we said, we don't love the top. We do love the upper six K range in, in weaker fields like this in general. Yes. There's some names, of course, names. We know if you're still tuning in and watching this show to round up the season degenerates like us, of course, we appreciate you. But at the same time, it just tells you why you know everybody's name. It doesn't mean they're good. They got to set a price to them. That's sort of been the thing. And in events like this, you can leave a thousand bucks on the table and definitely get away with it based on the field. This field, this tournament, I should say too, also Kenny, uh, it segues good to the betting segment has produced a lot of first time winners. So you can definitely get in on that action as well. So I got no problem playing a bunch of these guys 
down here at the bottom this week. All right, sounds good. Let's get to the betting card. I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I'm going Cam, 14-1. to uh, He's going to be my my main bet this week. Uh, Captain Kirk, 45-1. to um, Mackenzie Hughes, 50-1. to Patrick Rogers, 80-1. to Adam Long, 90-1. to I might add a couple of, couple of uh, bombs here later, but those are going to be my core five bets that I have this week. I'm glad you got five because I went seven. I love the long yeah, shots this yeah. week. Like I said, I think there's a good reason to do it. And I don't have much at the top. You'll see Henley, 30, who I mentioned earlier. Joel Damon, 66. I know it's dropped a little bit, I think, but some places still have that number. So I definitely like that. A uh, list I got first thing this morning at 110 to one. It's Oof. just an incredible number on him. I think people are getting him at 90 and still happy with it. I would be too, uh, but I was very happy with the 110. Swafford, 140. Neesmith, 150. Lebiota, 175. And I'm going to a guy, one, the one guy I did forget down there, actually, that I should have mentioned was Chesson Hadley, 250. He had that 62, speaking of Wyndham and Sedgefield earlier, that 62 at, at the Wyndham to get his card, if you recall correctly. So that was nice. And then he's got, a, I think it was a Sundog that brought this up today. I was checking out and just reminded me of that. He's always been better on Bermuda. He's been looking, people have been playing him a little bit, looking for him to pop in some of these events recently, and it hasn't really happened. So uh, happy to go back. And at 250, I just love that bet this week, Hadley at 250. Yeah, I like Hadley and I like uh, Lebiota. I might tell you on those. Those could be my bombs uh, this week. All right, anything else? No, I think that's it, man. We laid it out earlier what it's going to look like. So just a, a thank you to everyone. We appreciate you guys always tuning in, listening to the show, giving us good, good feedback on it. And we're hoping to bring a lot more winners in the new year. Looking forward to that preview show at the end of December. I think we've had three or four this week. I think I've had, I've had one, uh, a bunch of runner-ups. I think you've had two or three. So it hasn't been that bad of a fall swing for us to pick winners out. And it, it's actually been pretty good for the Cascade Cornerstones. Uh, yeah. in the fall so far. So let's go ahead and see uh, how it ends and if we can you know, ride the momentum a little bit uh, for this new year. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to the break. I need it. Uh, but uh, once we get back, it's going to be strong. I'll be strong, back again, ready to rock, ready to roll. Uh, yeah, you, so you can find me in the meantime. Don't worry. I know we're taking a break from this show, but uh, as mentioned, as always, you guys know where to find me at rumpuresports.com. I'll still have plenty of shows going on. I got NFL, Lots of action going over there. Showdown slates, all that stuff. Big T and the boys. Be a lot of fun over there. You guys can use promo code DGEN50. Get yourself 50% off your first month. And then, of course, find me on Twitter, at ToeTag and Tambo. Hit me up there if you guys have any questions. I got a cigarette here that just won't go out, and it's killing me <laughs> right now. It's killing me. Go out, cigarette. All right. You can find me on Twitter, at KendoVT. You can find my article on GupsCorner.com. It's, I think it's already out. I wrote it already, so that's good enough for me. Uh, I'll have my final betting card, all that good stuff uh, on Wednesday. Use promo code DGEN20. Get yourself a 20% discount to GupsCorner.com, and that includes all the sports, not just golf. Uh, they got some pretty cool tools there, really sharp minds over there as the smoke keeps wafting in front of me and making me sneeze. Over and over again. I don't know what's wrong with this one cigarette. But anyways, it's the end of the year. I'm done until December. Thank God. Let's win some motherfucking money. DJ Nation. I've been getting dirty money, Jordan Belfer. Stacking paper, stacking paper.